<laughs> Some soft jazz playing in the background. <laughs> I do like the idea of the hype train quiet car. We're going to think about that for a while. A viewer wants to know if the samples stay pressurized in the bio box as we're going up. No. Nope. no. The water, it's sealed enough that the, well, in some of the bio boxes, it's sealed enough that the water comes up at temperature from the depths, so 1.8 degrees C-ish, um, but no, no pressurization. Uh, Adam, I'm going to go ahead and keep moving unless you want to pause here and take a look around. Nope. Okay. Bridge now. One hundred meter step bearing one five zero. This terrain is actually what I expected to see a lot of yesterday, and we didn't. But like uh, talus slopes that have been cemented with uh, manganese crust. I expect as we get higher, we'll get into more kind of primary volcanic features. Another viewer wants to know if you ever worry about uh, some of the biological samples interacting together, or are they not stored together? Um, depends on the type of sample. We've been putting things together, so we have a sea star in with our sea cucumber right now, um, and that is not a problem for us. So you wouldn't want to put like the sea star in with a coral necessarily? Right, yeah. That'd just be like a free meal. Yeah. Good last meal. Hi, Marcy. Yes, this is our second dive of this expedition. This dive was launched around 4 a.m. our time. We are on unnamed Seamount G. Working our way up transects along the slope like a uh, crinoid a brittle star right of center right top of, of screen right center top oh yeah brittle oh, star yeah. it looks like and another limpet to the yeah. left yeah. Slip a bit. I think we just like the name. <laughs> I do it like is. it. It's a pretty sweet name. I also like that its foot is so big that it looks like its shell is on the inside and its flesh is on the outside. It does. Mm. It's like its cloak. Alright there, Dave, go ahead. Doesn't look like a predator, but it is. I thought brittle stars weren't predators. I think they do eat the corals. Is it regrowing part of its limb? On the it, it actually doesn't like people to notice it, Jess. But <laughs> can can yes. we not talk about that one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we see how this goes. <laughs> All right, go ahead and come full wide there, please, Dave. Thank you. That thing. Yeah, there's something on the rock right there. A sponge? Is it a sponge? sponge or, like or a, a tunicate. Mm, maybe a tunicate, yeah.
Sorry for the bumpy landing there, guys. Something hiding up right, in the rocks to the top right as well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, might be a chonoclops. This looks like a s sponge. Oh. Sponge. This is a sponge. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Lots of little associates. Tiny ones. And one big shrimp in the front. Yeah, that's a sponge. Come kind of a little like, wide there, please. Kind of looks like what we see when we were seeing the little pink floaty bits in the water. All right, Sarah, you get the prize for finding this thing. No, whatever it cave. is. <laughs> cave cave right out. Oh. So it's occluded. Occluded, yeah. Oh. Interesting. Hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Could be uh, the lights. Hmm. I don't know if we're going to be able to see this guy. We can try. Go ahead and push on in there, please. We can always overexpose it. Yeah. All right. I'm waiting around a bit here. Or was it just... An optical illusion. Altered rock. What is it? I think that's a rock. This altered mm. altered rock. That's disappointing. All right. Negative no. points to Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dang <yeah>. it. <laughs> okay, next time, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, pull right there, please. That would be a nice hat out, though. Yeah, this is Jeopardy rules, dude. You can't just <laughs> call out things willy-nilly. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's a critic <laughs> until they find it. <laughs> Argus has a cool shot you can see that the tail is sloped but there seems to be some pockets of sediment up ahead mm. if you want you can square up on the argus shot get a good zoom on there Uh, lower right has something. It's a little brown bit. Brown bit, lower right. I mean the stick? Yeah. It seemed like it was a different shape from a different dimension. Like the other side. From a different galaxy. From a different galaxy. Alright. Can do a quick zoom on this guy here, Dave? I'm not even sure what you're zooming on. Oh, <laughs> uh, there it is. Is this the brown thing you're talking about? Yeah, we were just trying to see what it was. I don't know. Huh. Nothing. Oh, uh, well, interesting. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I don't know. It's something, yeah. <laughs> a <laughs> something. former something. <laughs> Full wide, please. Can you come up there a little bit, Jake, please? Oh, 
That's the that's the grazer there. Yeah, yeah a lot of go. limpets here. That oh. white thing, yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah, it's like the shells on the inside. Let's see if we can. Go ahead and push on there, but there, Dave, please. Got any tighter zoom there? This is the slit limpet. Mm -hmm. Was there something in the in the bottom uh, left? I thought it looked like a xenophyophore, for, but it might have just been a clump of mud. Um, you can come a little wider, please. Down at the no, it's just a clump of mud there at the bottom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Raj. All right. Go wide. Thank you. There's more of those limpets there. So if you're asked, are the black tracks on the rock made by the limpet? We think so. Seems that way. Just kind of scraping that it. surface off. Yeah. Not sure if it's the only thing that does it, though. I'm going to say it's a barnacle. Oh, yeah, it's a barnacle. Barnacle. Good job, Jess. Viewer asks if we know why the slim, slit limpet looks like it's surrounded by that halo. Yeah, so how it was explained to me is that it has an oversized foot that comes out the bottom of the shell, but is so big that it goes around and covers the top of the shell as well. Wow. Mm. Can we look at some of that discolored material to the bottom left? I just want to see what it is. Mm. Yeah, sure thing. Bottom left, you said? Yeah. Sure. Um, I think it's below camera view now. Is it darker or lighter? It's light. It's that brown color right there. Would you mind telescoping yeah. it? There we go. Okay. Thank you. Some more even lower, too. All right there, Dave, go ahead. Yeah, it looks like oxidation. Mm. Huh. A little grainy tint to it, huh? Yeah. It's almost like you could see the volcanic rock texture. You see the... Yeah, little, the vesicle? Yeah. Interesting. All right, full wide there, please. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. If you would like to know if the biologists are looking at 
specimens and looking at their genetics, how the organism's uh, genetic makeup differs from seamount to seamount. Well, there's a lot in that question. So the first part is that most of the organisms we're collecting or preserving in ethanol, uh, which would render them unusable for, for genetic work. Uh, but some of the organisms are being frozen, and those can be used for genetic identification. Uh, but we're also collecting water and there we go. filtering Bamboo. it for environmental uh, DNA. And then, absolutely, there, the question of biogeography is one that's of interest to the scientists out here and on shore. Um, Can you do partial there, please, Dave? Understanding genetic differences between the That's organisms. Oh, look at that. That's a coral, yeah? I can tell if it's a bamboo or not. I'd say it's a single stalked bamboo coral, right? Can you see Any the little nodes? Looks like it, but I don't see the nodes yet, so I'll have to, if oh. we get a tight zoom. Got some input coming in from the chat. Where are you, nodes? Bamboo unbranched with anemone. Yeah. <laughs> How can you tell it's bamboo, Steve, if you can't see the nodes? Well, I think that they were saying that the morphology would be either, either that or a primnoid, right? Right. That, that would look like this, and that doesn't look like, the polyps don't look like a primnoid. But still, oh, yeah, okay. I'm curious if what Steve, uh, what other input Steve has to say about if you can't see the bamboos. Yeah, Steve, tell us how to ID bamboo versus from know it from a distance. From a distance. He's not typing. Oh, there he goes. He's sighing. Yeah, <laughs> he's, sigh. he's like, I've told them three <laughs> times. <already." laughs> Maybe a helpful mnemonic. I believe Adam <laughs> did specify that it was going to take 40 repetitions. Yeah. <laughs> 40 repetitions. <laughs> he says, sigh. With the zoom you had, you would be able to see the scales of a primnoid. Oh. The scales. Got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but from far away, just a single stalk. Is, I've learned to be more cautious. Oh. Um, especially with these Jeopardy rules. <laughs> yes. Bridge now. Pew, 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 daily double. <laughs> uh, one more step. One hundred meters. One five zero. Thank you. Looks like that discoloration is visible where the sediment gets scoured away. So it must have something to do with... Oh, the the browner tint? Yeah, I've seen hmm. it a little bit again, and it's kind of like where sediment seems to be scoured away. So lack of crust or abs like scoured crust? Uh, exposure of what was under the sediment. So sorry, there's some more of it right there. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I you know, hopefully when we stop to sample, we'll be able to get something that that shows that. Adam, you want to reiterate, is it 34 or 3,300? You guys want that rock sample? 33, I believe. Double checking. Roger. Yeah, 33. Okay, roger that. Uh-oh, those two limpets are about to do battle. Oh, no. <laughs> There's a snail the here. Yeah. Oh, it's a snail limpet yeah. battle? Oh, snail limpet. Yeah. And they're both making tracks at school. Oh, sorry, it fell off my perch. Small perch. All right, go ahead there, Dave. We don't really have any snails on the hit list, do we? I don't think so. Any more He's zoom? Pretty cute. Is he one of the dancing ones?
the trails are distinctly different. Mm, one form of a windshield washing motion. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Very pretty. It's really pretty. It's kind yeah. Of green it's beautiful. iridescent. Iridescent, yeah. Hmm. All right. You're going to come full wide there, please. One of our viewers is asking if any of the collected samples are used to study or advance human medical research. And I know Steve talked to us a little bit about that, looking at marine genetic resources. Yeah, there's always the possibility that, uh, that some of these organisms that have adapted to very unusual conditions will have kind of bioactive compounds that uh, can be used for Rudge. medicine. Yeah. Thanks. Or it can be used for, you know, other aspects of sure human thing. society. Thanks. So, you know, we keep keep finding these new organisms, and uh, there's researchers who dedicate their life to looking for these compounds, and you know, it's why we do basic research. That uh, yeah, he mentioned one that is already being explored uh, in terms of using it to fight pa pancreatic cancer. Cucumber. I think it's another one of those strangely textured ones. Oh yeah, the tongue. I don't think we gave it that name before, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's been he's been thinking about it. <laughs> Can I do a quick uh, zoom there, Dave? Just verify. <laughs> oh God, it does look like a tongue. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you can't unsee it now. <laughs> <laughs> You guys for the washiness of this. Come a little wide. That's good. Well, see you later, tongue. Go wide, please. Oh, wow. There's a tunicate. It's a tunicate, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Or is it an anemone? I think it's an anemone. Is it an anemone? Find out. Who's getting the bingo points? Who's getting it? Sponge. I, don't, I think it's Jake. Oh, Jake with the sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Any other guesses? All right, go ahead there, Dave. If it's a sponge, man, we're going to. I think. That's a sponge. No, I think. I think it's uh, a tunicate. I think it's a <laughs> tunicate. <laughs> I'm, I'm not biased at all. Uh, Steve's typing. Come on, Steve. Steve, vindicate me. I I think that's a tunicate, actually. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like it has a covering over the opening. Mm. Oh, you get them, Renny. Tunicate. Nice. Megalodacopia. Uh. Do I get one for just jumping on the bandwagon later on? Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I see how this goes, guys. We're going to stop have, the bus now. If I have negative points, you can't <laughs> jump on any bandwagon. <laughs> All right, pull it there, please. All right, let's zoom out ahead. Roger. I mean it this time. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> no more tunicate sightings for any of us. Yeah.
They're coming up, Jake. Yeah. Yep. Another cucumber. Oh, a new color. Another limpet. Wow. Oh. Like Limpet City. Oh, one of those holotherians we just collected. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the clear. Like a hundred meters lay back that Remy? Yeah. Maybe seventy seventy five. Ranch. So Adam, I can put some pauses in between these moves, that way we'll be a little less laid back in case we do find something to sample, but right now it would be kind of a... just moving at this pace. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we Give it, uh, I don't know, what kind of pause, like two, three minutes? Yeah, I could do that. So we still have 40 meters left in this move. Um, yeah. Just do that and kind of hold for a second. I mean, I'm, f I'm fine with being laid back. It's just we wouldn't be able to stop and reverse the ship and yeah, no, I think like a 45-minute kind of detour there. I mean, given you know that we've seen a lot of interesting stuff on this, let's give it a little pause and just in case we yeah. find something good. Sounds good. I think the move after that will be close to our 3,300 depth. Okay. Do that. Oh. <laughs> Another tunicate sighting there. I'm guessing sponge. Now you're guessing I'm going sponge. tunicate. <laughs> <laughs> Just bobbing around like it's on a stalk, so it's mm. my All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. Sponge. Oh, sponge, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Tiny little thing. Not only am I on the bandwagon, but I'm completely off on this one. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I please.
say thanks to our viewers who are tuning in from all over the world. Feel free to send your questions in the chat. Another Holothurian. Crinoid tucked under there. Yeah. Was it stalked or unstalked? I don't think it, I think it was unstalked. Okay. It was just stuck to the rock. Or grabbing onto the rock. Thank you. Sarah, we have a question I think you could answer. Okay. Our data logger. How long does it take to prepare the samples and does it depend on how you're preparing them? Yeah, it does depend on how um, and how many. So last night it took us, let's say we had 20 samples, 23 samples. Nope, 20. And it took us um, three hours-ish to process all of that. That was both rock and biological specimens. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, so we prioritize biology first, and then we do eDNA, and then rocks. And that was with um, three people, two of which were on, were learning how to do it, so mm -hmm. factor that in too. All of those specimens are prepared in the wet lab. And after the end of the dive, when our RVs are brought back to the surface, you can keep watching the live feed and see how some of those specimens are being prepared in the, in the wet lab. The last sponge we saw, um, Steve is saying that the stalks are made of bound glass fibers, almost exactly like fiber optic cables. Mm -hmm. And they typically go really down, deep down into the sediment. Very cool. During the uh, refit of the Nautilus over the last couple of years, uh, especially with the video system and the data networks, we built a backbone of all fiber optic cable all throughout the ship. And convert everything right as close to the cameras as we can and that kind of stuff to fiber optics to bring them up to the van. Just an interesting note on fiber optic cable. Yeah, that's been nice to plug into. It's, uh, I had some use for it earlier in the season. Yeah, the initial uh, investment is uh, 
is higher than with copper, but it's future proof because the bandwidth of fiber optic cable is virtually unlimited. We had something that's spitting out cereal down, uh, down in the sonar room that gets sent to the rack room. And then rather than run new serial fiber, serial cables up, we just did a media converter, converted the serial to, to light fiber, and then converted it on the top end back to serial. And for the listeners, by serial, he means serial data. Serial data. None of the equipment actually spits out serial. <laughs> <laughs> there are some... Frosted uh, flakes. Yeah, there's some tubs in the mess that... <laughs> All right, what's your favorite cereal? Like, guilty pleasure kind of cereal. Uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs. Whoa. <laughs> Never had them. What? <laughs> what? Wow. That's... Golden Grams. Oh, Golden, Golden Grams. Grams. Yes. Yes. Those are excellent. They taste better late, the later you eat them. Captain <laughs> Crunch. <laughs> Ooh, that's old. Oops, all berries. <laughs> Cinnamon <laughs> Toast Crunch. That's mm. where I go. Nice. I'm on board with the Reese's train. Yeah. I gotta try that. <laughs> you really should. It's a game changer. Bridge knife. Along that line, whatever you said, all this talk of Mangrove's 100 crust. meters bearing 150. Oh, from the science chat. Thank you. S'mores cereal. <laughs> Never had that. Wow. I didn't know that existed. That's the kind of stuff you buy once your kids have left home. Emptiness. I remember when I like went to college and I'm like, what? There's lucky charms here. <laughs> Were you eating only oatmeal growing up there, Adam? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yes. I think we opened up some suppressed memories. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at something that's not cereal really. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> That. Silent tears. <laughs> More cereal? Muesli. Muesli, yeah, that's what I eat now. <laughs> Put two two Reese's peanut butter puffs in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a treat. All right, Dave, all yours. I have a question about how do the sponges make those glass fibers? Barnacle at the bottom here? <laughs> oh, yeah, a little barnacle, yeah. Is this that thing we saw in the uh, beginning of last time, the Rhodogorgia, or am I mistaken? Something with an R that's not a Chrysogorgia. Uh, Remove. Remuli Gorgia Militaris. That's it. The Rhoda Rhoda Gorgia was the one we collected towards the end. A golden coral Chrysogorgia die. Remula Gorgia. Remula Gorgia. Okay. Putting that in the bank. This little barnacle here is interesting, though. Or is that a little sponge, do you think? Barnacle? I think it's a, I think it's a barnacle. Ramula Gorgia Militaris sounds like a, a dead Kennedy song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wide, please. A song by Split Limpet. Yeah. <laughs> Split Limpet covered, yeah. Dead yeah. Kennedy. Oh. Uh, so I paused there for a little bit and then called another move in, Adam. We're, Great. we're probably only laid back, uh, I don't know, 30 or so meters from the track. We're separated a bit from the ship, but I think that's just the way it's going to be for a bit. And we're at 3,400 meters. 3,400, yeah. So yep. 10 of these contours from where we are.
So far, this slope hasn't been too cliffy. It's been kind of a steady, tearless slope. Yeah. Wondering if at the top it'll be a little more uh, treacherous. Hopefully. Yeah. See some corals that way. This also looks like a tough spot for a rock sample as well. There's a Freya sponge, I think. Oh, to the right there? Yeah. That's fine. Some kind of sponge, I think. In our hearts, it's a Ferrea sponge. Yeah. One of our viewers was asking about depths that fish and mammals can live, and we definitely have been seeing some fish. And I believe on the first dive, was it a pilot whale that was near Argus on the first dive? We yeah, have. that was right at the surface. And not during our watch. Right. Not but another. there's a... Uh, do you want to know how deep a sperm whale can dive? The deepest diving mammal. Figure out. Not sure. I think the beaked whales are the deeper divers. Of oh, really? Thing. Yeah. At least we see the scours at the bottom. I'm not sure. Several, a couple thousand meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what the behavior is, but deepest recording recorded dive, three thousand meters. Three thousand. Wow. wow. But uh, typically 1,000 to 2,000 meters. <laughs> yeah. So just put a little HD camera on them and a little collar. <laughs> There's some papers out about the scours that we see really deep and that they're caused by be beaked whales. I don't know if it's a hunting oh, behavior or what. Right in front of us. That's a nice one. A double. <laughs> double whammy. Okay, double we got to take a picture of this guy. So pretty. <laughs> Nice and Another viewer wants to know if there are guidebooks to the yeah, deep ocean. Go ahead and ocean. do a partial there, please, Dave. Like we have. There are a couple of, or a few great websites that. Take you to turn off the lasers. You can use to identify deep sea animals. I have a couple of them open right now. Benthic Deep Water Animal Identification Guide V3 from NOAA Ocean Exploration. So the second one on the on the back on the stalk, that looks like just a separate organism, right? Yeah, yeah I think it's just a grab, crinoid. grabbed onto two do stalked crinoid and a non-stalked crinoid. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think so. I two think that one. the one in the on the stalk in the middle is grabbing onto it. Unless Steve's going to correct me and it's like the double. Steve says Rennie's right. Nice. Oh, nice. Nicely done, Rennie. I'm coming for Steve's job. <laughs> Just gotta look out.
Come a little wide there. That was a nice shot. Get a little more light on it. We'll get it going. I wanted to really uh, drive home your point there, Rennie. All right, go ahead. There, Some Dave. small worm parasites around the mouth parts of the larger. Oh uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, interesting. Is that those little? Little balls. Little yeah, puff looking things. Must be. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. All right, pull wide, please. You guys know when I say stuff, right? That. That I'm reading what Steve wrote. <laughs> <laughs> you can sell it as your own. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Steve's not here to defend himself, although he came up yesterday and was caused the whole scene. <laughs> <laughs> also criticizing our lack of a watch name. Yeah, and then he was like, let's just pause here and look at this coral for like 45 <laughs> minutes. And, oh, it looks like you didn't cover enough ground in your dive track. <laughs> Sabotage. Yeah. <laughs> Are these all these smaller bits? Do you think those are nodules? Yes. Oh. And I don't, I don't know that they're in place. Oh my gosh! What is that thing? Oh, I saw, I saw a shadow. I looked like a hole in the. <laughs> um, I don't think they're necessarily in place. Like slope failure or. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Uh, Steve refutes oh, okay. your uh, previous <laughs> statement. Well, he's not here. <laughs> he is virtually here. I'm, I feel like I'm pretty much Steve's mouthpiece up on this one. <laughs> right oh, are those parasitic worms? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, how was that sample of the roto... I think it was Roto Aridogorgia. Yeah, from what I saw, it was great. It came up really nice. Uh, I was helping Coralie in the lab, though, so I didn't get to see that one mm. processed. It's really delicate. Yeah, it was. But largely intact when we pulled it out of the bio box. How about the Holotherians? How did they do? They came up really nice. Super, super nice. Nice. <laughs> How do you preserve them? Freeze them? Yeah. We preserved one once in the Galapagos with we with the, uh, formalin, but we had to inject it with a pipette. Oh, interesting. Just to get some something in the inner tissue, so it wouldn't kind of. Uh, uh, deteriorate from the inside out. Yeah, it takes some time for that to work its <laughs> way through. <laughs> oh. She just pulled out her jerky, man. Give her a break. <laughs> 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 All right, Halitherian, we go. Hmm. Hold on to the bottom left, too. Some white stock something up top yeah, of right stock as well. Sponge or so, some kind. Some under the rock too, maybe an anemone. Yeah, it looks like it. Or a cup coral. Seems pretty deep for a cup coral. Probably an. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. We'll look at the both of them first. 
an enemy, yeah. This one's not on the list of battle. The anemone or the... Oh, the cucumber. Mm. I'm guessing no, but... Nice image of all of them? No. Not on the list. Okay. Anyone in particular you want to look at for the next two seconds? There was a stalked sponge. Mm. Did you want to see that? Yeah. Please. To the upper right. Upper right. Full wide, please. Yeah, we'll have to zoom them. We'll have to boogie. Have to boogie after this, yeah. Do a snap zoom if you want. Stand by one. All right, go ahead, Dave. Oh, that one's pretty. Yeah. I don't think I've seen anything like that before. No. Do you, Renny, see anything like that? Mm, no. Not with that wide. It's like it's a stalk, but it's also a pitcher. Yeah. Very pretty. All right, we gotta, oh, wait, please. gotta go. A little bit there, Jake. One of our viewers would like to know what kinds of uh, precautions we take to protect those unknown samples as they're being processed. Oh, something to the bottom left looks quite I interesting. I don't think we have time. Too fast. Okay. Yeah. Um, I get up slow. No worries. Uh, can you repeat that? Please? What are some of the things you do in the wet lab to protect those specimens when you're processing them? Or precautions uh, you take? I saw that. Um, well, we, we wear gloves to protect us from them. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. a lot of things down there are stingy. Um, and uh, I don't know, protect them? Just handle them with care. Get them to the um, repository as intact as possible. Yeah. Hey, you Jess, are you see? Oh, are you guys looking at the push core there? Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand how that's happening, but it looks like it is coming out from. It's uh, is there a little rubber gasket on the top? There is. Yeah, there's a little rubber gasket. So maybe we'll try giving it a tap once we get into safer position. But I don't think that actually will solve our problem because now we can have the bottom. Yeah. The top. Like the. It's slipping in through the through the lip and turbating it. Yeah. What is that? Looks oh. like a dead sponge. Yeah, there's a bunch of dead sponge pieces. Yeah. Do you think it's an encrusted that one there? Like yeah, I don't know. Does it have crust on it, or is it just kind of black? Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. It's just 
What is that? I mean, there were I sponge pieces. Yeah, there were sponge pieces up above, but this doesn't look like that. But it looks way different from than all the rocks around it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the underside, like a piece of crust, flipped over, and we're oh, looking okay. at the bottom of it. A little teeny tiny white something or other. Little, <laughs> little stars. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. Full white, please. I'm holding again for a little bit before we can continue. Roger that. Jake, you want to come up a bit, please? Another can. Another can. Split with it. That one had a pull tab, so it's old. <laughs> Miller High Life. Maybe it's yeah? Primo. That's the old Hawaiian beer. Yeah. Our depth here three three four zero ish. Mm -hmm. four zero Getting yeah. there. One of our viewers asked about the growth rate of organisms that live down here, sponges specifically, but I would think maybe just anyone wants to answer that based on general environmental conditions. Yeah, a lot of the animals down here are slow growing, have kind of lower metabolic rates because food supplies are, are less, so corals may be tens to hundreds of years old. I'm not sure about the sponge growth rates. They seem a little more rapid. Um, but there are also animals down here with shorter life sp spans. We see the shrimp swimming around and they don't live all that long. But some of the ones that attach the rocks have been around for quite a long time. I think they were saying, not here, but there have been corals dated to 4,000 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so they can be hundreds, not thousands of years old. And corals are easier to date than sponges, from what I understand. Um, so the sponge, there's, I don't, I don't think that's well constrained on a growth rate um, or correlation of necessarily perfectly with size and age. Okay, so there's probably another 20 or so meters of swing in Argus, and where. Depth is at three 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 zero. Yeah, so cool. let's wait till we settle out. Yeah. And we'll look for a rock sample and then we'll decide about the whether to go over to waypoint three or continue up. Sure. One of our viewers asked if we ever collect any garbage we come 